Well, today we are going to look at my dead induction heater. We've had this one for a long time now. It has done a lot of work. It has done probably above and beyond what it was ever supposed to do. And I'm very glad to have ever used it, but it has developed a fault where it doesn't appear to actually heat up anything and then it cuts out after 10 to 30 seconds. Kind of like a thermal trip out, but it's like a thermal trip out of it not doing anything. Uh, let me put a coil in and then dem demonstrate it, or demonstrate the fault. And then what we're going to do is open up and see if there's anything blazingly obvious as to why it would not be functioning. First thing, well if you have this problem, first thing you check is you make sure your coils are knackered like this one. I say knackered. What you don't want is the... Uh, did I just slacken off? I did. I did. So the coils have they got this fiberglass insulation to make sure it remains a coil of wire and not just dead shorted out because that, well, that'll kill your thing a lot faster than anything else is if you just got a dead short in your coil meaning that it's no longer being induction here it's just a dead short across like there you're just you're not heating anything up you're not creating any high frequency uh, you know what is the word <laughs> motion I suppose it's a motion you're wiggling atoms to get them to heat up right let's plug this in and see if we are plunged into darkness Okay, so far so good. We that one hasn't uh, plunged into darkness. Now we just need some sort of test piece. There we go. Right, that's too big. Come on, we must have a crappy screwdriver or something here. Not melt my good screwdriver. Oh, that, that one's seen war. So let's put that in there, and we're turned on. And there you go. So it lasted two seconds. No ideal. The fan spins, so it's not actually. That, alright, so we've definitely got some kind of internal fault. And thankfully, as we had this open a long, long time ago, I've already poked holes where all the bits need to be. Let's un unscrew the coil attachments and let's open up and see what, what things we can see inside. I'm not going to be heartbroken if I can't repair it because the price of them is now fall into such a level that you could get away with buying a new one every few years. Where is the... is it that size? Let's have a look in... well, a bit's fallen off to start with. Uh, well that capacitor fell out. That's probably that's, I'm going to guess that's probably part of the problem. I literally just opened the case and it fell off. Right, what's... We're going at two halves here. Alright, there we go. Let's get these screws out so I don't lose them for later. Come on now. Come on. Come on, screws. All the screws. Right. Well... That capacitor that fell off, fell off there. Um, how best to flip this so you can see? No, there, no, that'll, that'll work. Let me just tease that apart. If I just find something plastic to jam in the... To keep it spread. There we go. Right, come down for a look. So this capacitor... That... Capacitor goes right there. Marvellous. Now the question is, did it blow off or was it? did it fall off from a vibration? And it doesn't look damaged. We could test it if we knew what those values were. I'm going to have to Google what those values are and then fire up the old soldering iron and see if we can stick that back on. Right. Now, there was no way I was getting the capacitor back on with its, what do you call it, surface mount in it. So I have just 
taken it off the surface mount and then soldered both ends of the capacitor directly on the board hopefully because I can't actually see because I've got bad eyes but they look attached, the fuel's attached and Polari is right, I got the Polari the right way what I might do though is put a bit of captain tape round the outside of the capacitor because I'm worried about it touching any of the exposed metal uh, on the uh, metal exposed contacts on the board so I'm going to get a bit of captain tape should I ever find the end that still fits inside the case right let's see if we can jam all this back, back inside okay screw is in right I'll hold it together just now let us put the coil in the coil is okay it's not it's not great this looks to be a coated coil oh yeah I've unscrewed the things to put our coil retention thumb screws back in right that's that back in and plug it back in is this long enough to Plunge it down this three, two, one. Nope, so far so good. Right, I don't want to destroy my screwdriver. There must be a bit of shitty pliers. Put that in there. Wait, can you actually see any of this? Yes, you can. That's fine. All right, let's try it. Well, it's different. Does that mean the capacitor's dead? Because it's changed now. It now runs intermittently. Dead capacitor? I'm going with dead capacitor. So, we need a 220 microfarad microfarad? 220 microfarad capacitor Okay, so we have identified we need a new capacitor. So I'm going to go and order said capacitor. And then in part two, we will attempt soldering that onto the board again. And see if that fixes it. Any comments, questions, anything like that, please leave them down in the comments. And I will try my very best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.